A few things to start about this world. It's on 1.7.10, and that's a pretty old version. This world started on 1.6, I upgraded it to 1.7, and as soon as 1.8 came out, I decided to never update it again, and there's a couple reasons for that. The first minor reason is that they messed with the villager trading so that you could no longer create villager farms based on their last trade. Now, that's a really difficult thing to do, and I haven't had any progress on that so far, but that was kind of important because the potential there is just really, really limitless and insane, so I didn't like that. There was a lot of changes to PvP that I didn't like. That was another really, really minor consideration, but the big one, the one that really, I think, made the game ridiculous and made the game impossible for people like me to play in was because of the changes in enchanting. Now, with enchanting, they added Lapis Lazuli, which is really stupid, but whatever. Um, but one thing that they fixed was that you could no longer make a tool infinitely repairable with the anvil by renaming it. And that's something that you can do. And if you do that to uh, enough tools, you have yourself like a gigantic tool set and you can use it all until all the pickaxes are almost dead. And then you can just like repair all of them at a EXP farm. So you're no longer able to really do that in 1.8. And that makes, you know, playing the game for people who are pretty intense terraformers like myself, uh, somewhat impossible and untenable. And so as cool as slime blocks are and all the new stuff, it just was not worth losing such important aspects of the game. So for the unforeseeable future, this game will be permanently on 1.7. And I should probably get on to showing you. Uh, I think we started here at my house. It's just a few, it's just a little bit up here. So if we walk forward here, Here's my storage area, right now, temporary. This entire thing right now is uh, sort of a temporary look. I dug this entire hole, and uh, that wasn't the hard part. The really hard part was keeping all the materials, which is something I decided to do. And it ended up being something like 1.7 million cobblestone, and, you know, a shit ton of coal, iron, diamond, of course. Um, and what I really wanted to do was, you know for my home, just have something just really, really big and awesome. So what I plan to do with this is I don't plan to really make it beautiful or unique when it comes to how it's built. I'm going to build these obsidian walls up all the way to the sky limit, and I'm just going to utilize the space as efficiently as I can, install as many resource farms inside the house as I can. And once that's all built, then I have myself sort of this powerful fortress that produces a lot of materials and has a lot of utility, which is my number one priority. Cool shit, like what I built over there, that's second priority. Um, I also want to make this fortress interdimensional. And when we take a look at that, uh, what's going on inside right there, we'll learn a little bit more about that. So let's go ahead and jump down here. So if we look right here, we've got another, another portal. And right now it leads to nothing, just our nether rail system on the other side. But eventually I want to go into the nether and from top to bottom clear out a 50 by 50 space that's centered around this nether portal on the other side. And that will essentially create an inter interdimensional fortress in which I have just a component of all three. One right here, and then the nether, and then one down there in that end portal. So what I did when I started this project was I located an end portal, claimed it for myself, and I built the entire hole based around it so that it's centered around that end portal. So you can access all three dimensions rather quickly right here in the center of the fortress. Up here I have my storage chamber. Um, I've got this. Now, this took a year to farm, and it's at a wither skeleton farm, where I... Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that later when I show you, but essentially uh, I took a long time to farm all of those wither skeleton skulls, and then kill over 3,000 withers. We'll talk about that later. So we've got that, and then we've got gold. This is actually the remaining gold that I have from a gold farm that is 
currently extinct. I took it down because the pistons were glitching and creating glitch spots. Got the dragon egg right here. And, you know, we just got all sorts of stuff around here. This is my main storage. It's really, really messy. There's a lot of things I plan to do with this fortress. But one of the main things is a gigantic storage system where you have absorbing floors. And hopefully I have as many absorbent floors as I can on as many levels as I can within the house. And those uh, items will be sent to the massive storage system, which filters for every single item and there's just a sort of small chamber that something looks like this a small room with about this amount of chests for every single item in the game and so you can basically just throw shit on the floor it automatically gets sorted and that'll be really cool this is all the cobblestone behind that is a bunch of obsidian uh it's about 3.2 million i think um i farmed all that in a really dangerous and unstable obsidian farm which I think was uh, explained in the first video on this channel. And so this is the end component of the fortress. It doesn't really exist yet, of course. Um, but one thing that does exist is uh, this floor down here. Of course, those are hoppers. Um, it's really big. It covers the entirety of the endstone island because what I wanted to do essentially was mine down the entire island of endstone. And that's something I'm going to do really, really quickly. Um, or really soon, rather. And... Any endstone that I miss, instead of falling into the void, it'll fall into these hoppers and be collected. Under the hoppers is glass, and under that, obsidian. And so I built that on the very, very lowest y-axis that was possible in the end, so that I have a bottom floor for my fortress when I start building, once I've cleared this entire island. So this is in a single-player world. This is a server. And in the past, there have been a lot of people who have played on this server. So this is Community City where most people have built or made their contributions to the server. This is sort of the genesis of our world. So back in, I don't know, I think 2012, maybe even 2011, basically six months before 1.7 came out, we started this world with my little brother, and uh, we eventually came upon these grass plains, and we started to uh, civilize them with the building of this apartment. And eventually we flattened the area and went rather far, um, you can't see all of it, clearly, and we just kept civilizing it more and more and building a city, and uh, a lot of what you can see is what I've built, a lot of it's what other people have built, and uh, we'll just go down here really quick, hopefully we don't land at that, good. Yeah, that's a lava roof, uh, I built this building, uh, I built this clock tower, that's uh, one, of the, one of the most favorite things that I've built, really. Uh, I also built this sort of strange village here. I just basically tried to get as creative with the building designs as I could. My favorite here being the nature room. Yay! Villagers don't really like this house though. Just me. And so we have uh, the clock tower here, the crazy Willy Wonka garden going around it. And uh, the clock tower actually does, um, it does keep track of time, though I keep that off generally. Um, let's see, we've got our broken door here. It's like ridiculous. There's just something going on with these bottom piston extenders. I don't know. I've tried to fix it for years. Um, so it keeps time, and uh, this clock is actually layered to clocks upstairs, and it keeps layering. So this floor controls about a minute, and level 2 controls 57.2 minutes. Now the way this one goes slower is this one pushes around a redstone block, it eventually hits the stairs bit, which powers this clock just one iteration, redstone-wise. So that's much slower. It just gets powered by one every minute. And uh, the same with this one. As soon as the redstone block is pushed around and hits that side, it'll power one iteration to the level above, which makes it 45.7 hours. So. This whole clock system just increases exponentially, and I sort of lost track. I sort of just just didn't expect of how insane the time would get after I did the math. You get to like what I don't know, zillions of years, 1.47 billion years, 339 trillion years, 16 zillion years. So basically, the universe will end before that top tower uh, does a full rotation on its on its redstone clock cycle. 
But yeah, that's kind of ridiculous, but this was kind of fun making. I like the colors, I like the materials. So that's about it for this, uh, for this community city. Um, I'm going to start showing you guys the farms that I have worked on, because basically I've shown you the extent of what I have built when it comes to just things for fun. When it comes to things for fun, I really plan to get started once I've satisfied myself with mastering this environment in general and just becoming the most resource rich that I can through the building of farms. Okay guys, welcome to my almost, almost, almost vanilla wither skeleton farm. Now I'll explain what that means in a moment, but basically what I really, really wanted with this farm more than anything was automated wither skeletons. Now, turns out that's not possible because you have to kill them yourself. So, you have to be involved and I went through many different sort of tests to figure out exactly how that could be done and it really started with the building of this wither skeleton farm and when I was finished I was just killing them manually and doing that for hours and the rate was just way too slow for me. So I ended up amending it. I'm going to show you guys what it is. So we're going to go down here really quick. Um, yeah, what you're looking at is kind of confusing, but where, where we are right now is we are in the nether. And what I did was from the top bedrock to the bottom bedrock, I mined out all blocks um, I don't know how wide this is. It's like 210 by 310. It's something around that. But basically, I did all that. And then I filled out the bottom with uh, blue glass. Because I like it. It looks nice. It's the sea. And this looks like the end of chunk borders. It's Yeah, see, it's sort of hard to tell what's the edge of a chunk and what's actually the wall that you're looking at, which is an obsidian wall. So, lots of obsidian walls in my world, but, you know, it looks really nice, and this took, this was massive, this is, this is the hardest thing that I've done on the server yet. It took me years, I'd work on it for a couple months, give up for a year, come back, work on it for like eight months, uh, yeah, I think I only gave up once and took like a six month break or something like that, but, um, Basically, what happens is it's a pretty simple system design. The only bitch was, you know, just eliminating all spawn spots within the radius of the farm. Now, I made this farm way too big. I made this way too big. I got three sort of, like, units here. And when I started doing it, I was like, this is just so big. I can't even run across the whole, you know, diameter of this farm, killing all the skeleton skulls that are dropping down. So... What I did was I created a lock switch over on the right side that locks these uh, two sides, and so we just permanently don't use those. And then I ended up Frankensteining this last bit that we actually do use, um, and I'll explain what it actually does here in a moment. Um, this is all the redstone. Uh, I did it myself. I can't tell you which way goes where, because this was completed. This farm was completed um, about a year from last January. So it's going on two years now um, since completion. And uh, all those beacons that you saw came from four chests, three chests, three chests of wither skeleton skulls that I farmed up over the process of a year. Now, this is essentially how it works is I turn on the farm and then I stand here. And then a process of, I'll probably show you if we go out here. So they get released, and and they jot, they fall here. They take some damage, and then the pistons slowly sort of ease them down. And once they're down there, um, this block extends, which kills everything except for wither skeletons because they're a specific height that the other Nether mobs are not. And so everything dies except for wither skeleton skulls. I have them go through two sort of layers of this process because. It takes a while to kill them, and sometimes, like, some of these monsters, you know, fall down here with full health points, including every single blaze. So yeah, I just have a lot of, uh, 
I have a lot of head and skull crushing processes that these guys fall through. And then what happens here is you see that these have nether portals, clearly. So originally they didn't have nether portals and I'd just like kill the wither skeleton skulls when they finally land down here. I found out that that was so horribly inefficient that I frankenstein this farm and I did some testing. And my idea was, what if I could teleport the wither skeletons once they're here to an other dimension location? Which means that they're out of the nether mob cap and then the wither skeletons would start producing more. And then we could just keep that process going until I have like a thousand wither skeletons after like 10 hours of this. And I thought this is a great idea, so I tested it. And unfortunately, it turns out that the wither skeletons stayed part of the nether mob cap, even if you transported them to the other dimension. So I was kind of stuck. But then I logged out, and I logged back in. And it turns out all the weather skeletons that were sent to the overworld no longer were a part of the nether mob cap, which means that the nether mob cap was reset, and it could send a whole nether, whole nether mob cap uh, batch of wither skeletons to the overworld and if you logged out and logged back in every so every three minutes or so this process would continue automatically until you had like say a thousand wither skeletons on the other side ready to kill there's no way for me to automatically log in and out on vanilla minecraft just endlessly without me having to do anything so it was either find a mod on minecraft and I couldn't find one, so I ended up just having to create a script. So I created a script that uh, logs me in and out every three minutes. And that's what I meant by this farm not being completely vanilla. is because uh, I'm using some code to log me in and out every three seconds. Not three seconds, three minutes. To keep the farm going. And so that's how it goes. And it transports it all to a really, really small facility on the other side of the overworld. I won't show you guys that. Actually, what am I talking about? I will show you guys that. Okay, so this is the other side of the farm. And uh, basically what happens is I have to use the end to transport straight here. Because if you come here by distance, you will despawn all the weather skeletons. <laughs> so either do that or the best way I do it actually is two different accounts. One that is in the nether portion of the farm that you know basically has the skeletons spawn based around him. And then I log him out, and then I log me in, sort of right around here. And so they all spawn right around here. All of the, all of those nether portals on the other side are wired to transport all of the wither skeletons basically to this one. So they get pushed right here in this here thing. And then we've got the kill switch right here. We activate that. That kills. Not with their skeletons, but everything else. Everything else will die because they're getting strangled right here. That really helps because when you have like 1,400 mobs here, you really need to kill the other ones. And as soon as they're gone, the lag goes down. It goes way down. That's about as much as my computer can take. And that's created over like a 9 to 11 hour period. Um... And so then once they're all dead, you deactivate that. You got about a thousand wither skeleton skulls, wither skeletons after that. And then you just kill them for a really long time. And they suck up all the items. And then you check up how many wither skeleton skulls you got. And of course the farm stores other things, you know, bones and the coal and everything. Uh, I transported it all away since I finished grinding. Except for right here, we've got... Our fourth chest of Wither Skeleton Skulls. We did four chests, that was basically the goal. And uh, we used this farm. Uh, it would run overnight, and in the morning, I would kill all the skele Wither Skeletons. And over the course of about a year of that, I got four double chests of Wither Skeleton Skulls. And so three of those were used to create one whole double chest of beacons. And that will be used for something I will explain later. But yeah, that's the basics of this farm. Um, this was really ambitious, and I'm really proud of what I've done. I doubt I'll ever be able to create something better unless some mechanic makes, you know, makes collecting wither skulls non-interventionable. If we can get wither skeleton skulls without me having to kill them with the sword blow, 
then I'll either modify this farm or make a whole new one. Who am I kidding? I'm gonna modify this farm. That fucking that C area took me so long to clear. So yeah, that's the extent of this farm, and uh, we'll be right back with the next portion. So this is my iron storage, and let's see. As you can see, I've used quite a bit. Uh, there we go. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, no, eleven. Okay. I only have eleven double chests of iron blocks left. That's actually not a lot. It used to be this entire wall. Um, I've been doing a lot of projects lately that involve a lot of hoppers, and uh, you've seen a big field of those under the end. So this is where um, this is where my fortress would presumably be under this bedrock. Now I had the idea to remove the bedrock, and that's possible in 1.7, I believe, with this trick that involves growing dark oak. And I don't know if it got fixed by the time 1.7.10 rolled around, but we'll see. I'm certainly thinking about it. I don't really want to mess with this bedrock boundary because other people could exploit it. Not like anyone else plays on here. But, um, yeah, no, I'm just thinking about it. And if I do it, then, you know, I can take advantage of the full space up to 256 up there. And I could bring cool shit up to the top of here, too. That couldn't make it normally, like horses, villagers, and other shit that I can't think of right now. Okay, so this is what I've currently been working on. Um, what this is, well, it's currently built on a skeleton spawner. And if you go up there, you stand in the spot where the skeleton spawner activates. And uh, it produces bones for you, and arrows for you. Now what I've been doing with the bones here is, uh, they've been stored up here. Wow, we're getting pretty full here. I think that's about halfway. We'll be able to use them all again soon. So, they get put in a bow meal. It's crapped in the bow meal. Put in this chest. This whole chest system feeds these two systems. Now, over there, and over here, same farm. But I have two. Now, those horrible so sounds that you're hearing is the Wither. And uh, he's trapped. And he's focusing on these two guys. And uh, with a combination of specific block configuration, water, and these two guys for their attention, they are stuck there just endlessly firing skulls. And so you turn this farm on and it continually pushes all of the wood that you produce by holding down right click into wood that gets pushed into the path of the skulls that gets blown up and taken to storage. Now the reason I have two of the farms right next to each other is because uh, I have two laptops and I can run two of these at a time because I wasn't satisfied with the uh, how fast one was. So I run them both at the same time they make wood very fast, and they send them into a gigantic storage system down there that I'll show you in a moment. Now, over here we have something that's rather depressing. Oh, it's not completely fixed yet. Uh, I'll fix that later. But uh, basically, other than that and the strange holes you see in this iron bars, what you see is a farm that was built and destroyed. So, these withers that are stuck here, this farm's been up for like six months. So these withers have stood the test of time. They're not going anywhere. As long as no mob or any sort of creature gets within the chunk that this is loaded. Well, I mean, even at that, the withers are already focused on them, so that's not going to happen. So as long as a player doesn't log out inside this chunk closer to the wither, so that when the chunk loads, focuses on you instead of these guys. As long as that doesn't happen, I don't think there's any way that these withers can ever escape. They've been stuck here for six months so far. But, much more unstable situation here when you're building a wither cobblestone farm. I built that last week, and a couple nights ago, he escaped, destroyed everything, 
and uh, I was very depressed. I stopped playing for a couple days, and then I decided to make this video. So, other than a stray shot that hit this redstone right here that I had to repair, Wither did not compromise these farms, and he very well could have after he killed his Iron Golem and Snow Golem. He could have seen the guys over here, went and attacked them, and that would have freed this Wither, and just all hell would have break loose. But fortunately, that didn't happen. He just destroyed this farm. He was down there at the ocean. I went down there and killed him. That's why my armor here is so low. But what I wanted, essentially, was two farms that produce wood, one farm that produces cobblestone. And from that, you'd have the spawner, which produces arrows. Arrows feed this. Bones feed that. This produces wood and charcoal. This is the charcoal producing system. You can flip a switch over there that uh, switches it from wood to charcoal produ production. And then if you want the charcoal production on, you can have the charcoal sent to meet the cobblestone and cook smooth stone. So you could produce wood, cobblestone, uh, charcoal, and smooth stone. All in the same farm. As well as bones and arrows, but those all get used. So we're at a standstill now, because I don't know what to do. I'm going to run the original farm world download design for a couple days to see if the f Wither escapes. And if he does, then obviously it's just not a stable enough design, period. And, you know, those guys have experimented with it way more than I could ever, ever could, so I doubt I could find a way to keep the Wither tamed inside the structure. So, uh, if I don't find a way to do that, I'm going to have to explore other options. And we'll discuss those options in a moment. First, I actually want to show you this, uh, this structure. The storage structure. Obviously, it's out of range of those farms so that it doesn't have to load. Because it's so gigantic. And once these chests start appearing, it gets so laggy. You're going to notice the FPS go down. I notice it. Um, how many items does this store? I can't remember. It's like 80 million or something. I know it's, what is it, 20,000 chests? Maybe 10,000 double chests. It's 32 by 32 double chests. I can't do that math in my head. Anyway, so, so we've got, we've got layers here. This is the final design of storage systems that I'm going to have in this game. And there's a very specific reason that I do this. Very specific. It is so annoying when you are like thousands, of, when you have thousands of chests fill, filled with a material and you want to move it from one spot to the next. It could take days, not days, it takes weeks, but most likely months, uh, to transport it all manually. But with this system, it can automatically fill with all these hoppers. And then eventually, if I fill it enough, perhaps all the way one day, I can mine all these hoppers down, and then I can put hopper chains in under. And that's sort of a removal procedure for the hoppers, where right now it's an insert or installation procedure that fills the thing up. And so you dig all these out, you create the hopper chains that take all the items out, and then you have a single hopper chain that goes to wherever you want it to go, however far. But creating that hopper chain to go there is certainly going to take less time than moving every single double chest. Like I can't even conceive of how many runs that is, how much time that would take. And that's just for a close-up location, right? What about a long-distance one? That'd be even more insane. So... Yeah, this was the wood. Um, that was going to be cobblestone. On the other side of this, I have another one that was going to be uh, uh, smooth stone. And of course, over there, I have one that's half the size of this one. And that's for charcoal storage. But we've ran into a snag. And the snag got me thinking, I'm probably actually just going to take this entire farm and mine the whole thing down. Because the foundation upon which it rests is a single skeleton spawner. And that's just not fast enough for bones. 
I want bones faster. I want more bones. So, this is what I'm going to end up doing. Probably. If I can't get the wither cobblestone farm to work. I'm going to tear all this down. And I'm going to relocate the materials. I'm going to relocate it... Um, into chunks that haven't actually been generated in this world yet. I have to find where that is, because basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the Cobra. The Cobra is, is it's a spawn your own spawner tutorial on YouTube, and I can create four skeleton spawners close enough together to where if you stand in the middle of them, they all activate at the same time. That is a very, very fast bone farm. Four times faster than what we currently have, which is Fantastic. And then upon that foundation, we will build all these farms. That includes rebuilding the two bone farms that we have, which we'll be able to use a lot more often because the bones come up much faster. And then we'll create a cobblestone farm. Now, if the other one doesn't work, what we're going to do is we're going to create a creeper cobble farm, and that's on YouTube as well. There's no tutorial for it, but I can pick it apart, I can build it. Essentially what it does is it takes a basic mob cap farm, and it filters out all mobs except for creepers. You do that with iron golems, because they attack all those monsters except for creepers. And then you have a bunch of creepers, and uh, what you have is a loop of a rail, and the creepers continuously explode as you go away from them. And then they explode like a, uh, a big like load of cobblestone. And then pistons push more cobblestone in, created by cobblestone generators from water and lava touching each other. And you just constantly go in this circle as creepers are dropped and they blow up the cobblestone. This farm is massive and I thought it was amazing. And uh, I've always wanted to build it. And now I got my opportunity. So I'm going to build the Cobra. I'm going to get the skeleton spawners build these wither wood farms next to them and then next to that I'm gonna build the creeper cobble farm now that's gonna be able to produce a lot of smooth stone with the wood farms providing the charcoal and then they smelt the cobblestone into smooth stone so you're gonna have a farm that can generate a lot of bones a lot of arrows a lot of wood a lot of charcoal a lot of cobblestone and a lot of smooth stone, and we'll have storage chambers for all those things. Now, including the whole creeper mechanism and the filtering out of the regular monsters, if we can suck up those items as well and put those into storage, then you have mob cap uh, item storage as well, which includes a lot of different stuff. So it's just going to be a huge endeavor, and I'm actually pretty excited for it, and I'll be chronicling my building of it. So, this is one of the... This is actually... Well, it's really the first big farm that I ever built. I was really proud of myself. But essentially what it was, was just a tutorial on YouTube. Well, I use tutorials to this day, but this was a tutorial for an Enderman EXP farm. I can't remember what YouTuber this one came from, but I did it verbatim. And then, cosmetically, you know, I built the whole building around it. And uh, I was pretty proud of what I did. And to this day, I still use this EXP farm. I still love it. Uh, it's got two... Two modes. This is Ender Pearl Collection mode. So when I turn the farm on, all the spots up there are going to be released, and then Endermen will start spawning and falling to their death. And so it just produces Ender Pearls. You can watch them die and get the Ender Pearls. Isn't that great? Get them and then I hit the switch, it's going to move up one block, and they will survive that fall and be at one hit. One hit death. And that's how you get the XP. So I'll show you that really quick. 
you know, it's a really rather simple design. I did chicken farm in the back, but uh, it was too close to this, and so Enderman kept teleporting in, and so for every Enderman that can hide, you know, else like can teleport out of here and hide, it's just gonna cut down your your EXP rates. So um, I'm gonna build another one like way down there, so that it's too long and to be able to teleport. That'll be built in the future. I don't use this EXP farm, EXP farm very much right now because there's not very much I need to do. Although I do need to repair this marker. But uh, that's essentially everything there is to this farm. I have an enchanting thing over there. Um, so there's some stuff that I didn't show you guys. Um, one is the gold farm. No longer exists. I tore the whole thing down. Um, another is the iron farm, and I'm not tearing that thing down, but it doesn't work anymore. It's the iron trench by Tango Tech, and for whatever reason, I tried to start it up again uh, about six months ago, and it just wouldn't work, no matter what. So I went ahead and retired that farm, and I'm going to build uh, the best 1.7 farm uh, within my spawn, spawn chunks, the iron foundry. That's another project that we're doing in the future. Until then... Um, the iron I showed you earlier is all we got to work with, so I'm probably going to have to build that pretty soon. And then another thing is, I'm not showing you the witch farm. It's a little bit broken right now, the redstone components uh, that let the witches, you know, glitch through the blocks. That's broken, I have to fix that, and uh, we're doing actually a lot of other things with that witch farm too. Now that I've explored the present and past of this world... I'd like to explain a little bit as to why I do this, and what I have planned for the future. So, the reason that I do this is because, I mean, I was really enthralled by Minecraft, as many people were when they first discovered it, but uh, I guess my mental predisposition was I was looking for something that could essentially express a way of mastering the environment that you're in. So it's a survival game that just goes really deep. And Minecraft was that exactly. And it also had uh, squares. I just really liked the design of it, pretty much in just every single way. It was really exciting for me. So I, I really, really had this idea of, like, I wanted to sort of civilize the entire world. But then when I found that the entire world extends 30 million blocks in every direction that I couldn't do that over 40 lifetimes. Um, so my goals are a lot more modest now, but I have a lot of goals regarding this world. Um, I just want to make it as awesome as possible. So what you're seeing right now is my fortress hold, and it's 200 by 200 blocks. And that's pretty cool, you know, we civilized a 200 by 200 block area of the world. Top to bottom, you're completely safe within it. That's just so fucking cool to me. I really like that. But I want to take that way, way farther. I want to create a city that's sunken into a hole like this. That's 6,000 by 3,000 meters instead of this 200 by 200 that you see. Now, I collected all the materials in this hole, and that was really difficult, and I did it with pickaxes. Um, that's not gonna be possible with 6,000 by 3,000, or at least it'll take so long that it's just not worth pursuing. So, what I plan to do is make the required TNT. Now, I've planned and experimented with blowing up TNT, and it turns out that in order to blow up the entire 6,000 by 3,000 radius down to about Y20. Now, I'm digging it deep because I want the buildings themselves within the city to take full extent of the height of the Minecraft world, which is up to 256. I want a little bit of room for underground, so I'm leaving y it up Y20 instead of like Y10 or 5 or something. So, I'm leaving that down. And then... I'm going to blow it up, 
and it takes 20 million TNT. I need to generate 20 million TNT, which is 80 million sand, 100 million gunpowder. Now, gunpowder is easy because you can automate a creeper farm. You can just create or collect gunpowder from a creeper farm. Or a witch farm, which is actually what we, what we intend on doing. So, I plan on making the witch farm 100% efficient because we're going to be using it a lot. And I need a lot of chests there because if I'm creating 100 million gunpowder, I'm going to get pretty much that much of all the other items that witch farms produce. So I'm going to do that. The way I'm going to get the 80 million sand is through a sand generator. Um, so there's basically a lot of things that I plan to do. Um, and this is sort of my plan. My plan is to have this city be out, far, far out, far away from home. It's going to be about 100,000 blocks out from the center. And I've already built the rail for that. I've already found the location. The first thing is that I plan to resurrect the Wither Obsidian Farm. And not the one that I originally built, but the one that harnesses the power of four different withers to make it as fast as possible. Uh, it's really fast. I'm thinking maybe 50 million obsidian. And uh, generate a snow farm too, of course, to generate all the snowballs for that farm. Once I'm done, I grind down Wither Obsidian Farm. Next, I build the Iron Foundry. This will be important for both aesthetic iron blocks and for all the hoppers that I'm going to make. The next thing I plan to do is plant temporary outside boundary beacon beams at the city. Now this is so that I can have the fastest haste for what I'm going to do next, which is mine the boundary down to bedrock. The boundary is 3,000 by 6,000 by 3,000 by 6,000. So a square, just like that. Once I've done that, I plan to move required obsidian to city. I'm not sure how much that is. Just add... It's 18,000. Uh, and then I... And the place wall. Now the reason I'm placing the wall first is obviously because if you're going to blow up uh, a section of underground and you want it to be precise, you should use obsidian boundaries. Then it just will be perfect. You don't have to couture the edge at all. That'd be a nightmare. Um, so after I've placed the wall, we cut down all city area trees. And then we sand all city surface water. Just all the water we can find within that place. I might try to get to the underground water, but honestly, um, you know, without a see-through walls thing, you know, there's just really no point. We'll probably be better off after the explosion just clearing all those water source blocks. The next thing I plan to do is build the sand generator. Now, this thing works really slow. It's probably going to take at least a year of farming for me to get all the required sand. And it's a very complex machine, so we're going to see how that goes. After I'm done with that, we're going to mine down all blocks in which farm range so that we can make it as efficient as possible. Because right now, we just have all the caves lit and uh, the surface area mined down to, like, Y63 and then covered with water. Um, then I'm going to rebuild the witch farm redstone. After that, we're going to grind down the current witch farm storage that we have and build for 80 million capacity for the redstone, the glowstone, the gunpowder. Uh, after that, I'm going to put stand storage and gunpowder storage in highest in air for the witch farm. Then I'm going to build a hopper line from sand generator to witch farm sand storage. Now that's about 20,000 blocks distance. And then I'm going to just farm all farms and get all the resources that I need. Once I have the 100 million sand and 80 million gunpowder, or was it reversed? Then we're going to build a crafting station in the air at the witch farm for TNT production. And then I'm going to craft all TNT. Who knows how long that'll take. Then I'm going to build a hopper line from witch farm to city. That sounds uh, like not a big deal, but that's going to be a nearly 100,000 long hopper line. 
and once all the TNT is at the city, I'm going to start planting. And that's the end of my list, because after that, it's pretty self-explanatory. You blow up the hole, you uh, flatten the hole, you make it nice, you plant your floor, and then you just start building the city. So this is all going to take a really, really long time. Um, but it's sort of just the first brick when it comes to what I want to do with this world. <laughs> I have tons of ideas after I've completed this, but this is sort of the first big one that I want to do. Just some gigantic metropolis, just far out, you know. It just seemed like a really cool idea to me. And uh, I'll be chronicling sort of everything that I have, everything that I do. Everything I do in this world, I will record it and post it on this channel. So I'm excited to have that big sort of anthology of work documented. And uh, I don't know, thanks guys for watching, I guess.